Hi, so this is the part of the CCM training series where we're going to show you how to extract CCM images for analysis with the software system metrics. Right, so when, when we finish with, uh, with a patient, when you examine your patient, you will usually end up with a lot of images and many of these images are repeated. So the question is, how do you choose the right images for analysis? As we explained in our previous uh, presentations, what you need is about six to eight images from both eyes of a patient to have a good, a true representative of the true density of the nerves in the CCM images, in the cornea of the patient. So what do we do? So we create a range of these images. First of all, we have a quick browse through the images just to get a feel of what's the density for the patient. So now at this point, I would like um, to give you a very brief background and say that the nerve density across images should not be variable for anybody who hasn't got a reason for neuropathy, but will be variable for anyone who has neuropathy. So what we see in this patient, we see images like this one, where perhaps we can see one, two, three, about four nerves, but we also see images where we can see about one nerve. So what I want to do here is to create a range which represent, represents this variability. And how do I do that? I would choose one image as a minimum. So and in this case, this image perhaps would be this one, where we can see one nerve. Okay. Looking through the images, I identify other images which are not as low, but they are not very high as well. Let's say this image, for example, where we can see one, two nerves, and a branch. So I will choose this image and then I will go and choose the image with the highest density, which in my opinion, based on what I see here, would be this one where we can see, as we said, about four nerves. So by using this method, what we create is a range of a minimum, a maximum, and an average image, which we have found, and we have published on that, that this represents as close as possible the true density of the nerves in the patient. So then what we do, we repeat the procedure for the other eye, and in this case, again, a quick browse through the images, we see, for example, here that there is an image with one only nerve, but then there is an image with perhaps two nerves. So I just want to explain here that this is because we're moving the microscope very slightly across the x-axis to capture as many nerves as possible. By doing that, we see different densities in different parts of the cornea. And that's why we get um, these variable images. So again, you will see most of the images contain about two nerves. So I think two nerves, the images with the two nerves is going to be probably our average, like the other eye. But then you will see images con containing more nerves, about four here, one, two, three, four. And let me scroll further down. I think that's about it. So what I'm going to do in this case is to choose my image with one nerve only as my minimum. And then since the image with the two nerves is repeated so many times, I'm going to choose one of these images as my average, my middle value, 
and then I'm going to choose one of these images which as we said contains about four nerves or maybe five as my maximum. So and in this way we have created a good range of the of the density of the uh, of the nerves that we see in this patient and now we're ready to analyze and generate the results and compare to our controls database and see whether this patient has good neuropathy or not. Right, and this one is a, is, is a control case, a patient without a reason for neuropathy, which I would like to show you the difference compared to the patient with neuropathy and walk you through exporting images for a control. So, again, a quick browse through the patient images. You will notice here that the nerve density doesn't change that much uh, between images. Of course, a slight change should be expected, and it's normal, but it's not like in the case of the patient we described before. So what you see here is images, again from different locations, but these images contain a comparable number of nerves. So the job is much easier in this case. So you'll see here that this image contains about 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 8 to 9 nerves, I would say. So if you browse through these images, you will find an image with a lower density, like this one, which is about 1, 2, 3, 4, between 5 and 6 nerves, okay? But that density doesn't go very low. So again, you will see another one here, which is about the same number. So what we do in this case, we use the same approach, but you will notice yourselves that the variability is not as high as for the patient. And of course, the result, the final result is not as low. And this is what makes a control and a patient different. So again, as we've explained in the previous videos, we make sure there's no, uh, there no pressure lines, uh, the contrast is good, you can clearly see the nerves. I would choose this image and then I guess I would choose this one which is slightly lower to establish my minimum from, for the range. And then I would like to choose something that is perhaps in between like this one which is going to be my middle image, my average. Okay. So, there you go. Then, we're going to repeat the process for the other eye, and again, we're going to end up with about six to seven images, which we can analyze and uh, calculate our parameters, fiber density, branch density, and length. At this stage, I would like to say that perhaps you notice here there's images with less nerves. The reason that I don't choose them is because the quality is not very good, and I can see that there's nerves over here that they don't show up on the image, and therefore, I think this is not, uh, it wouldn't be a good choice for our analysis. So we produced a video which uh, shows you how to capture the images using corneal confocal microscopy. And now this video illustrates the method uh, we follow to extract the right images for analysis. And it, there is a third video you can watch on how to analyze the extracted images using CC metrics. Thank you for watching.